Hello YouTube, Mr. Oznet here. Tutorial time. First quick thanks, really quick thanks. Thanks to Don from Digital Universe for giving me a good shout out. Got me a good number of subscribers, so thank you very much for that. Thank you for subscribing. But onto the tutorial. Clipping masks, as you can see from the title. Um lost my chill of thought. Talking too quickly. <laughs> um so yeah, it's not just the basics, I'm gonna be showing you some examples as well. So even if you know about clipping masks, then be sure to keep watching. So first up, I'm just going to try and describe what a clipping mask is. If you don't know what a mask is, this will be helpful to you. So first, just got a white background, and I'm going to put in a black square. I just did this earlier. Just a normal black square that I filled with the rectangular marquee tool. And then on top of that, I've got some grass, some lovely grass. And the best way I can describe a clipping mask is if you think of a window. And so in this case, we've got a window, which is the black box, and the grass, which is outside in the fields even though it's grey grass it still looks rather nice and we are going to with the grass on top on the top layer and the box below it we are going to hold down alt and click between the two layers where the icon changes the top one will move slightly to the right and there'll be an arrow there now and when you zoom out as you can see the mask has been applied because you can no longer see the grass around the edges you can only see it through the window and kind of the layer properties still apply, you can still move around the top layer, the grass and it's kind of still being masked and you can still move around the window and it's all the masking is still being applied. So that's clipping mask, kind of a basic-ish description, Mr. Rolls, I'll be coming on to that later. Um, so here's some examples of how I like to use it. Just in using this really overused image I know, just to give you some examples because it's a good image. So first up, I'm going to give you three examples of ways I used to like to use it. First up is splatters. Go get some splatter brushes off of DeviantArt if you want, if you don't have any. And I'm just going to put some on here. doesn't matter what colour it is because the clipping mask gets rid of the colour. I'm going to put some splatters on there like that. Um, you may notice, notice I put them on the left side because I'm kind of doing the motion, applying a add flow and stuff with the clipping mask. I said in my advanced smudging tutorial that you can do it with smudging and I also like to do it with clipping masks as well. So I'm going to make a new layer and then hide the splatter layer and then go up to the top. If this will move up to the top. Are you going to move up? Oh, there we go. And I'm going to go to layer. I'm going to, not I'm going to go to layer. I'm going to go to image apply image and then click OK. Make sure the, the splatter layer is hidden though, you don't want to see that just yet. And then go back down over here, unhide the splatter layer and apply the clipping mask. Now all I've done here is just applied the image so that I have something to work with, so I have some kind of colours to work with to fill um, the space. And I like to apply the image because I like to use kind of similar colours to the image as that always makes it look good and you can never really go wrong with that. So the clipping mask is applied but you can't really see any difference. That's because you're looking through the window but what's through the window is exactly, is exactly the same as what's in front of the window kind of thing if you get what I mean. So the layer 2 is exactly, uh, as, exactly the same as the background copy or background layer. So you're going to want to move this slightly and as you can see as I start to move it the clipping mask becomes evident and you just want to move it around till you get a nice spot kind of look for the colors that you want to include I think I'm going to look for kind of some of the greens in his jumper so I think about uh, there looks pretty cool and then as I said before all the same um, layer properties still apply so on this bottom look any if anything you want to change to change it you want to do it to the brush layer like if you want to hide it you hide the brush layer not the layer on top because that just gets rid of the clipping mask so if i wanted to set it to overlay that would look kind of cool but it kind of goes away a lot so i could set it to lighten get rid of the dark areas set it to darken get rid of the light areas or i think i'm just going to set it to normal and then maybe just get my eraser tool and do as i love to do erase the bad parts like so. Actually I'm going to undo that because that looks bad. Let's raise that side. There we go. 
not the best example. I could actually do with moving it a bit to the right and move the mask a bit as well. That looks better. So that is splatter brushing. As you can see, it doesn't look that amazing just because I kind of rushed it. But if you start to build it up slowly but surely, you'll get a nice effect if you do it right. So I'm just going to hide that. And next, I'm going to do some liony type things. Luckily enough, I have some brushes which will kind of give me a shortcut of doing this. But you can just do it with a pen tool if you want to do them yourself. So, make it a bit bigger. Bit smaller, <laughs> and I am going to brush on some blue like that. As I said, it doesn't matter what color it is, I'm just going to rotate it a bit like so. And then, as before, hide that layer, new layer, image, apply image, unhide the other layer, and apply the clipping mask and then move the top layer about until you get something you like. This one I'm going to look for the colours that I want, something like that. And as you can see if you move it off to the side you get to you, you get the blue back. So one way you can get around that, let's say I wanted that there, there's some blue there. So all I want to do is just duplicate the top layer, let me zoom in for you. Um, if you can see this is the top layer if I just drag that down to the new layer, it will duplicate it. And now I have two layers being applied to the mask. So this top layer, I can then move up to the top. As you can see, it kind of ends there. And then I can use that to fill the blue area. And yeah, that kind of just solves the problem. But I don't want that there because I'm not going to be putting that there. I'm going to be putting it there. Go back down onto this layer, maybe a overlay. I think we're just going to keep it a normal, maybe just erase some parts. As I said before, do everything to the bottom layer. Anything you do to it, do it to this one. Otherwise you won't see the effect. So I'm just going to erase parts of it. The ends of it maybe. Like so. That is looking pretty good. Next up, and finally-ish, um, last brush I'm going to use is a kind of grungy type brush. These are good if your design is kind of grungy looking. I don't do many kind of grungy looking designs just because I think they look kind of messy. But you may be into them. So you this could be useful for you. Just looking for a good brush, that's alright. So now I'm just going to brush on some of this blue making it very kind of grainy going outwards like that maybe a bit around the leg as well and then as before don't have to repeat it do I yes image apply or hide the hide the layer image apply image unhide the layer apply the clipping mask and move it until you get something you like like that maybe just set this to overlay maybe set it to lighten Maybe set it to darken, or maybe I think I'm just going to lower the opacity. Something like that. Now, as you can see, separately they don't look that good, but if you start to build them up, as you can see now, um, you really get something which looks pretty cool. See, that overall looks pretty cool. You've got the lines, you've got the splats, you've got the grunge brushes and that. So, my best advice is just to build it up over time. Um, and yeah, with all graphics, my best advice is just to build things up, be patient. If you notice, a lot of my speedouts take longer than an hour, just because I do things very gradually. And that I think that's one of the reasons why um, I'm quite good at graphics, because I just take my time and build things up slowly and get decent results. So this is the kind of thing you can come up with, with Clipping Mask. Very finally, just showing you how to do it with text. Let's say I wanted to use the window as this text, so I want to apply some stuff to the text. Um, as I said before, apply the image above, apply the clipping mask, and as you can see, it fills the text area. But then one problem you might f find here 
is that you want more bits filled in around here but it ends too soon so as I said before duplicate the clipping mask and then move it over and all what I've already done here is I've moved it over here and then I've erased the right side the left side of it sorry by just getting the selection and deleting the left side of it so that you can still see that bit behind it and then I've done it once more with this bit just to fill in that bit and I've erased all of that I know you didn't understand that neither did I but the main thing is not that one is this one so cleaver masks tutorial sorry it's been pretty bad this is like my second take um, first take was probably better but then I kind of mucked it up but anyway thank you very 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 much for watching my name is Mr. Ozenator and I will see you next time